something I found very remarkable uh, and not easy to imagine because I was brought up in a sort of fairly musical world and music is an essential part of my world, was to meet someone, a delightful, intelligent lady who lives in New York who cannot perceive music as such, cannot recognize music. This was apparent when she was a, a little girl, when she, uh, um, uh, when she couldn't recognize any music and when she was asked to sing, she really didn't know what was meant. And people were puzzled because she wasn't deaf. She could uh, speak perfectly well and hear their speech and hear ambient noises, but she seemed to have no idea of what music was about. And when she was tested at one point, she really couldn't say whether one note was higher or lower than, than another note. And she, um, she, she tried to get interested in music. She would go along with boyfriends and her husband to concerts, and she found the experience somewhere between unintelligible and excruciating. And, um, but she... Uh, it was a great relief to her. You know, people often suffer from the feeling that they're unique. And, uh, and she saw an article some years ago saying that, yes, there's a thing called congenital amusia. And some researchers in Canada were working on this. And she got in touch with, with the people in Canada. And they came and visited her, and they tested her. And they were very reassuring. They told her, first, She's not the only person in the world like this. There are some others, and they'd be happy to introduce her to some fellow amusics. They said, second, this was not just bad motivation or, or neurosis, as her family had said. This was a real neurological condition, and a little part of her brain was not that well developed. And they also said to her, um, you don't have to go to concerts anymore. You know, if your husband wants you to go to a concert, you say, you know, you go, I'll go to a, to a film or something. Um, and, um, but uh, this lady um, you know, can't um, hear tones or semitones. She really she can't hear the intervals which compose a scale. She has no idea about music. And uh, so I, I, I spent a lot of time with her. She has a good ear for, for poetry and for language, but no ear for music. And so I, 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 for some reason, that sticks in my mind as, as very, very fascinating. I, I think in general, what has, especially, what has especially startled me is to have to people talk about musical hallucinations. And, uh, you know, a, uh, a hallucination is not at all like, like a mental image. It's very startling. You know, people look around, they listen, uh, they... Um, uh, I, I first heard of this in the 1970s. Uh, it was an old lady in a nursing home, and she described to me how she'd been woken one night by hearing songs, Irish songs, sung very, very loudly. And her immediate thought was, of course, someone had the radio on loudly, and she was amazed, in fact outraged, that someone would have a radio on that loud in the middle of the night when everyone was asleep although she was rather surprised to find that people were still asleep. And she went looking for the radio, and she couldn't find it. And then she, she'd heard that a filling and a tooth could sometimes pick up radio waves. Um, and then she thought about it more, and everyone... Uh, and she, these were only songs that she knew, and they kept being repeated again and again, and sometimes just fragments of songs, and there was no commentary. And then she started to realize that the, as she put it, the radio was in her head, and that she was hallucinating. And um, uh, when people um, hallucinate, they, it's very bewildering and rather terrifying. But um, I... Um, uh, and what she was describing in her hallucinations were really very early memories and early musical memories which were now being somehow regurgitated in, in her mind. And I've in fact spoken now to hundreds of people with musical hallucinations and, and each time it, it startles me as, as it startles them. Most of us have never had a hallucination. You have to have had a hallucination to 
to know how startling it is and how you mistake it for an external perception, how you will look around for the source of it, and then you have to realize that some part of your brain and your mind is on automatic and is producing these perceptions. And um, uh, in general, I think sort of speaking with people with musical hallucinations, which can sometimes be, be very beautiful and very moving, sometimes rather frightening, one of my patients, for example, started to hallucinate Nazi marching songs, which he had heard as a boy growing up in Germany in the, in the 1930s. As a Jewish boy, he was terrified of the Hitler Jugend and their, and their songs. And fortunately for him, the Nazi marching songs were then replaced by, by some Tchaikovsky. But it's, it's really... Um, I've been amazed continually by these people because it shows in a way that everything one has heard, even if one didn't consciously listen to it, is recorded pretty, pretty indelibly in the brain and it can be reproduced. And so it, it shows something very remarkable about the brain and also about people's ability to learn to live with hallucinations. Mm -hmm.